Now sit back, stay in your seats, and enjoy the Star Lasso Experience. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best movies of 2022. This isn't you! This is me! For this list, we're looking at feature films that captured the zeitgeist of 2022, standing out as the year's best examples of pure cinema. What's your favorite movie of 2022? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Black Panther – Wakanda Forever They came from the water. They had superhuman strength. He's coming for the surface world. Following a film as successful and impactful as Black Panther was a daunting task. Continuing the story after Chadwick Boseman's unexpected passing sounded like an impossible task. In a king-sized effort, Ryan Coogler delivered a sequel that worked as a touching tribute to Bozeman and a respectful passing of the torch. While it's hard to top the original, Wakanda Forever improves upon several elements, namely the CGI. The performances are as captivating as ever, with Angela Bassett turning in a Best Supporting Actress-worthy performance. I am queen of the most powerful nation in the world! The film is also a feat of world-building, with locales like Wakanda and Talokan being grounded in fiction but feeling real. You'll cry within the first few minutes, and just when your tear ducts are dry, the ending will get to you. Show them who we are. Number 9. The Banshees of Inisharan Call him Sonny Larry. Didn't you? He used to be the best of friends. We're still the best of friends. No, you're not. Who says we're not? Sit somewhere else. Martin McDonough reunites Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson, but The Banshees of Inisharan is a much different film than In Bruges. It's an anti-buddy picture about a bromance crumbling. As the Irish Civil War looms in the background, another war arises between Farrell and Gleeson's characters. While the story takes some twisted turns, it's a surprisingly relatable film about human nature. We empathize with the lonely Farrell's desire to preserve their friendship, but we can also identify with Gleeson's need to focus on his legacy. Do you know who we remember for how nice they was in the 17th century? Who? Absolutely no one. Yet we all remember the music of the time. Everyone to a man knows Mozart's name. Stuck in the middle is Carrie Condon in a breakthrough role as Farrell's sister, who dreams of a better life beyond her dreary island. Funny, tragic, and at times almost mystical, Banshees is a profound breakup movie unlike any other. Why aren't you talking to Parag no more? That wouldn't be a sin now, would it, Father? No, but it's not very nice either, is it? Number 8. The Woman King We are the spear of victory! We are the blade of freedom! We are the whole man! Hollywood historical epics aren't what they used to be. The Woman King takes us back to a bygone era of rousing battles and almost Shakespearean drama, but with a few progressive twists. Viola Davis is such a commanding screen presence that it's a wonder why she hasn't played more action heroines. It's difficult to imagine anyone other than Davis starring as General Naniska, who leads an equally fierce ensemble that includes the charismatic Lashana Lynch and relative newcomer Tuso Mbedu. But you don't know where you're going. We need smart warriors. The dumb ones die quickly. I'm not dumb. Then show me. With her debut film over 20 years ago, Love and Basketball, director Gina Prince Bythewood sought to normalize seeing women in athletic roles. The Woman King pulls off a similar feat, but on a grander scale, showing women everywhere there's a warrior and leader within. To the victor! <laughs> pop culture superfans everywhere. Do you love to argue with WatchMojo's top 10 ranks? Introducing WatchMojo's first and very own party game. Bring your superpowers to the table and fight for your pick to be at the top of the list. It's all the fun of the comment section, but in real life. Number 7. Avatar – The Way of Water Let's get it done. 
car was an experience that many thought James Cameron wouldn't be able to replicate. It took 13 years, but Cameron has done it again with a sequel that'll have you in awe from the first frame and sustain that wonderment for the next three hours. Once again, the story is familiar, but we'd argue that The Way of Water is stronger on a character level, with welcome additions like Sigourney Weaver's Kiri and Zoe Saldana giving one of her most emotional performances. This is our home! I need you with me. And I need you to be strong. Cameron excels in the visual storytelling department, taking us to new parts of Pandora that are atmospheric, layered, and jaw-droppingly gorgeous. The action sequences are also among Cameron's best, the climax being a triumph of cinema. Three more sequels? Yep, we're in. The way of water connects all things. Before your birth, and after your death. Number six, The Batman. The city's angry, scarred, like me. There are several live-action Batman movies, but Matt Reeves' interpretation stands out for an assortment of reasons. It's arguably the first to feel like a genuine detective movie. We can't think of a superior villain to challenge Batman's detective skills than the Riddler, who has never felt more menacing or grounded thanks to Paul Dano. You showed me what was possible. You showed me all it takes is fear and a little focused violence. You inspired me. Out of your goddamn mind. Colin Farrell's Penguin and Zoe Kravitz's Catwoman are also among the best versions we've seen of those classic characters. The story belongs to Robert Pattinson's Batman, though. When we say that, we mean that Bruce Wayne largely takes a backseat to his alter ego. It goes to show that Bruce is the true mask, in a story that sees a young Batman decide what kind of hero he wants to be. I have to become more. People need hope. Number five, The Fablemans. You dismiss what he does that's playful or imaginative. You could afford to be a little encouraging. The Fablemans might not be Steven Spielberg's absolute best movie, but it is his most personal. And for anyone who's grown up watching Spielberg's films, this family drama is bound to be a deeply personal experience as well. Between Michelle Williams' angelic mother figure and Paul Dano's more practical father figure, we receive a better understanding of how Spielberg became the filmmaker he is today. I'm asking you to do this now for your mom. Yeah, She's... and I said that I will, just not tomorrow. Please. Don't be selfish, she just lost her mother. That's more important than your hobby. Dad, can you stop calling it a hobby? Sammy Fableman serves as a vessel for the legendary director, with Gabriel LaBelle and Matteo Zorian Francis de Ford being the spitting images of a young Spielberg. In addition to celebrating Spielberg's youth, The Fableman's is a love letter to cinema, from its craft to the real-life stories that inspire what we put on the screen. You stop making movies, it'll break your mother's heart. I don't know what to do anymore. You do what your heart says you have to. Number four, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. You wanted me to live. You asked for me to live. Who, who are you? My name is Pinocchio. The latest version of Pinocchio opens by telling us that this isn't the story we think we know. Yeah, we've heard that one before. But del Toro's take on the classic story is not only unique, but arguably the first to rival the Disney classic. The decision to tell this tale through stunning stop-motion animation was brilliant on multiple levels. Of course, Pinocchio himself is a puppet, but the same can be said about many others in Benito Mussolini's Italy. Our country comes first. This boy cannot be killed. He's the ideal soldier. This approach amounts to a fresh story about individuality while still maintaining the core messages about showing others empathy. It's a film as much for adults, with themes of parenthood, mortality, and personal growth tying in perfectly with the story we thought we knew. I'm a star popper! A star! They love me! They accept oh, me! Number three, Triple R. <laughs> Sometimes the simplest titles pack the most powerful punches. When we think of contemporary epics, Triple R immediately comes to mind. Epic is just one genre this beast of a motion picture manages to encapsulate. It's also 2022's most invigorating musical and most satisfying buddy picture, with insanely inventive action sequences that put most Hollywood blockbusters to shame. You might be wondering how one film can flawlessly balance so many elements that seemingly shouldn't go together. Hey. Shoot! 
Simply put, it's an experience you need to see to believe. Director S.S. Rajamouli had already produced some of India's most successful films. Still, he outdid himself with this Herculean effort that will have you rising, roaring, and revolting against more conventional entertainment. Number 2. Top Gun Maverick well, Let me be clear. This will be your last post, Captain. You fly for Top Gun, or you don't fly for the Navy ever again. Even in an era of nostalgia, there's always a risk in resurrecting a decades-old franchise like Top Gun, especially with the pandemic forcing audiences to be more selective. Although Maverick was flooded with streaming offers, Tom Cruise insisted that the long-awaited sequel be reserved for the big screen. You know what happens to you if you go through with this. I know what happens to everyone else if I don't. This gamble paid off in spades, becoming Paramount's biggest movie domestically and Cruise's highest grossing film worldwide. With spectacular action that places you right in the cockpit, this wasn't just a movie you needed to see on the largest screen possible. It was an experience that required second and even third viewings. It's the kind of summer blockbuster that Hollywood just doesn't seem to produce anymore. With any luck, though, perhaps more studios will follow director Joseph Kaczynski's example. This isn't a joke. I asked you a question. I'm where I belong, sir. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Barbarian, the year's most surprising, unsettling, and occasionally hilarious horror offering. Keith. Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Ryan Johnson pulls the rug out from under us again in the best way possible. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a murder, and the killer is in plain sight. For at least one person, this is not a game. The Northman, Robert Eggers' grandest and most gorgeously shot film yet. I am Amleth the Bad Wolf, son of King Arvand and War Raven, and I am his. All Quiet on the Western Front, a worthy successor to the 1930 Best Picture winner that stands on its own. Babylon, singing in the rain meets boogie nights makes for an exhilarating time. I've never done nothing except disappoint people my whole life, but I made it on my terms, not theirs. Number one, everything everywhere all at once. Babylon. What are you doing? I'm learning to fight like you. Everything Everywhere All at Once is something of a miracle by modern standards. A film that's funny, touching, heart racing, visually ambitious, philosophically stimulating, and boldly original. To top it all off, audiences sought the film out almost through word of mouth alone, making back almost four times its $25 million budget. The exceptional ensemble includes a career best performance from the legendary Michelle Yeoh, a comeback from Ki Hui Kwan, and a star making turn from Stephanie Hsu. Right is a tiny box invented by people who are afraid. And I know what it feels like to be trapped inside that box. In more ways than one, the film is the equivalent of an everything bagel. It's topped with everything a true cinema goer could ask for. It is possible to have too much of a good thing, but the Daniels knew exactly how much to bite off with this tour de force. Hey, you said I was the wrong one. What you did back there, it changed my mind. You were incredible. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.